So this is the second neural network I built after doing Andrew Ng's um, online course. I'd looked online for people who'd done neural networks, and I found Mike Pallister's on GitHub, which was um, effectively this. But I've speeded it up, added some optimization, coded it in a slightly more rigorous uh, Excel way. But but fundamentally, it's the same structure as his. Uh, and what it's doing, if I do a thousand uh, runs, let me reset it. Uh, and I'll initialize it so that I don't have any learned parameters in. What I mean by the learned parameters are, are these numbers here. So this is, a, the, this is the model. This is the, the gradient. This is the offset for layer one. Uh, and then I've got uh, layer two here, which is the, which is the output layer. Um, and I've got a softmax function on it to say whether I am guessing the, uh, the number correctly. I'll, I'll come to that in a bit, but let me just show you it learning and explain what's going on. So I've initialized it, and now I'm learning. Um, these letters are CSV file um, from the uh, mnist um, directory. This is kind of the hello world of machine um, of learning of deep neural nets, as you take this data set and you try and train a model to look at it. That's the actual number that the human was trying to write, 34201. But this is what my model is predicting it to be, which is going to be terrible because the model is completely untrained. We've basically just got the platform on which it can learn. But it is learning. And the way you know it's learning is this thing here, the confusion matrix. And what you've got is the, the digit 0 to 9 that is being presented to the neural network and then the digit 0 to 9 that the neural network thinks it is. So it started off, it hadn't got a clue. But now you're starting to see a little bit of differentiation. You're seeing an accuracy of 20%. Well, you know, it's 1 in 10. You'd expect the accuracy to be 10% until you start to get some, some learning actually taking place. So already in 230 iterations, it's kind of starting to get a slightly harder central line. Um, when this is printed, my computer is so slow. Uh, it's not actually live uh, printing the learning curve, um, but it, it will show you that, that learning process, and then we'll do another thousand iterations to see how it's getting um, uh, closer. Um, so I've added a few little things. I mean, there's a bit of VBA on here, but the VBA is only stamping the new versions of the parameters uh, for the, the two layers. So that's all it's doing. It's taking an area and stamping onto... Uh, an existing area. But all of the calculations are, are in Excel. Um, I've got um, 15 neurons in the first layer and I've got 10 in the, in the last layer of the output layer because obviously there are 10 outputs. And I'll, and I'll talk you through how, how the cost function is set up. But fundamentally, it's really simple. You forward propagate uh, the equation. It's really simple. I've used um, sigmoid and softmax. Uh, and then you back propagate and you say, well, you know, what's the what's the loss function? What's going to indicate whether I'm getting closer to recognizing these letters? And then you you get the derivative of that and you take it take it back through through back propagation. Look at it online; it's just genius. But they only really settled on it, I think ten years ago. But it's dead easy to code. You just set this thing running, and it's able to recognize um, human letters. We're at thirty three percent now. So that's 500 iterations, and the model's already learned some of the characteristics that the, the human has in, in, in writing these letters. Uh, this chart here is what the model thinks the number is. So basically, the most likely is the highest spike. You know, what is the likelihood of it being a... a that, that was a reasonably strong number. But it's still pretty ropey at the moment and not, and not recording that much. So let me pause this, and then I'll show you the learning curve when it's done a thousand iterations. So now you can see their learning curve after a thousand iterations is already at 45% uh, accurate. I'll give it another. Let me give it another thousand. Um, and uh, hopefully that's kicked off. Yeah, it's still the screen recorder is blocking my macros. But it's, it's running now and it's putting another thousand iterations and you'll see that curving up as, it, uh, as the accuracy gets better. Again, I'll pause it till the 1,000 is over. So unfortunately, I wiped out the start of my curve, uh, but you can see that it's gone up another 10%. Uh, but if I, I kick it off again and, uh, and carry on learning another 1,000 iterations, talk you through these. Um, this model requires um, iterations to be on. Basically, I used uh, Mike Pallister's idea of uh, just updating the counter with, with iteration, but you set it to one iteration, 
and it allows you to have a recursive spreadsheet. I built a version of this that was fully recursive so that it ran with the full iterations of Excel, which is lightning fast, but I haven't quite got it right yet. Uh, and that's a really interesting project that I'd be interested to pursue with, uh, with other people with some ideas there. The learning rate is very slow at the moment, 0 0.01. I can bump that up because I've added momentum. So that's going to kind of smooth things out so I can uh, do a run of this uh, with momentum. I haven't got the um, RMS prop working, but, uh, but it's there and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of progressing towards it. I put a little bit more VBO on this, which allowed me to do a, a step, which is you know, train for a thousand iterations, then do a test on the test data set, and then train again for a, uh, another thousand iterations. And you'll see the learning curve appear with that, but it's quite a long run, so maybe I'd do a another video for that if, uh, if there is interest in this. So I'm going to pause this and I'll talk you through the code uh, that it's based on. And so we're just coming up to the end of uh, 3,000 iterations, which is a tiny amount. And we've now got the accuracy up to 62%, which I admit is pathetic on this data set. It should be something like 90%, but you know, give it a million iterations and we'll, we'll certainly be, be there, which is incredibly quick in Python, but uh, desperately slow in Excel. However, I'm uh, an Excel spreadsheet jockey, so it's a lot easier for me to code this in Excel. So looking pretty good. We're up to 62%. If I set the iterations down to, to um, maybe uh, 500, and I now do a test set, just to explain what I mean by this, that here is the data. So this is the training data. And what we've got is we've got a, a, a vector of 784 uh, comma-separated numbers, uh, and they are it's 28 by 28 frame, and the first one indicates what it is. So that's a 9. That one is a 2, 3, a 1. This is the training set, and it is uh, 60,000 long. The test set is exactly the same setup, but I've only got 10,000. But the idea is you, you train on the training set, and then you've got a completely fresh set of numbers for the... Um, for the for the test set. Uh, and and, and that, that 170... Have some 784 uh, digit vector is, is, is this 28 by 28 matrix of, of the number. And so I'm just sucking that in um, each row at a time and it's showing you a representation of what the data is. So the neural network is looking at one long vector of 178 digits. It has no indication that there's a 2D representation of the number. Um, if I run the test now, so uh, now I am testing um, and I'm testing... Whoa, can I get that to kick off? Yeah, Excel's a bit sticky because my spreadsheet's so poor. Uh, so this isn't learning. This is just cycling through the, the test test data that we haven't seen. And we're, ooh, we're getting accuracies of 88%, which is rather bizarre. But uh, I think it's early days in that. But the, uh, the test set uh, yeah, is very strange. I think that was just statistically how it kicked off. So you, should, you can't see that. that. That's pretty strange for it to be higher than the training set. Um, but uh, you're getting this strange result now. So that's 500 iterations, and you should see this flat because there's no learning taking place. We're not back-propagating uh, the results. We're just looking at the model that has been constructed from the, from the previous run. Uh, it's coming up to the end now. It's a bit quicker because there's less code in it. Uh, and when that's run, you should get a flat line, or roughly flat line, uh, as we've, we've tested out the... Um, 500 different digits. In fact, you know, nothing very spectacular there, but you're seeing it kind of declining. And I would assume we would head toward the test set. Although, possibly the reason why this is high is because we were looking at test numbers based on 3,000 iterations, and the bulk of those were in the early stage of the learning curve. So this cumulative accuracy I've got is, is uh, probably not that useful. Um, okay, so here's the model. Um, the, the, the vector, which is, is separated out into its individual numbers is here. So this is this is a single case. This is a, le a number, in this case it's 7. If I uh, F9 that, that's a 4, it's a 0. So the numbers are cycling here. Here is x. And then um, the function, uh, uh, y equals mx plus c, is that one, and it's based on the m's. These are the learned parameters that are storing the model's ability to recognize numbers, and this is the offset. So that's layer 1. And here's the nonlinear function, and I've used a sigmoid here to make it nonlinear. So from y equals mx plus c, which is linear, we've put this beautiful sigmoid curve on, makes it nonlinear, and makes it able to, to bite and use an, another layer. Here's the back prop, come to that in a bit. 
Uh, and then I've, uh, well, I've added momentum, which, which just slightly complicated, but dramatically speeded up, even with a uh, stochastic gradient descent, you know, single case views, it, it, you know, it, it helps dramatically. What I really need to do is do about 20 or 30 um, cases at one time, do a batch run, and you get a much, uh, I think, a much quicker, uh, smoother route to a train model. Layer 2. Uh, this is the, the M's and the X's, and, and you see that that's based on the output um, of, uh, of layer one. Uh, and then finally you get to the, um, the, the real output, which is the you know, Y. So what actually was the letter? In this case, it's a two, and you see a one in that two slot. For F9 that, then this is a six. And then here is the loss function that's saying, well, you know, what does the what does the model actually think? So, so what we've done there is we said take the actual output and 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 mine off, take take away the um, uh, what we what the model is suggesting it is, uh, and that's a softmax function. Ah, my recording is now over ten minutes, so I'm going to kill it there. But um, I've then added momentum, which is this exponentially weighted view of of the gradient, which smooths things out and allows you to arrive at a result quicker. Uh, and if I carry on with that and do a step review, which I maybe put on another video, you can see a thousand iterations train, a thousand iterations test. But that's all for now. If, if you're interested in this, I'll post probably tomorrow the um, EMNIST data set, which is a letters. So that's 146,000 letters. I built that, I finished that on Friday. Uh, and that was a real, really tricky one to train. Uh, and, um, but I've got it running reasonably quick, uh, and I'd be interested in what other people think. So uh, there you go, 80% accurate. Um, end of recording.